So App Omni has worked with hundreds of customers to secure their SaaS platforms. And this is the data that we find. On average, there are 42 third-party applications connected into the average customer SaaS environment. 42 third-party apps either directly running on or integrated through cloud-to-cloud -cloud communication into your core SaaS applications. Of that number, 22 haven't been used in six months or more. These can be remnants of data migration or digital transformation. They could be apps that users connected, tried for a little while and never came back to. They could be free trials that expired. But these applications continue to run and they continue to have access to your production environment until you uh, turn them off or you remove them. So all over half are unused. Then we look at how did these SaaS applications get in there? 20 of that 42, so roughly half of them, were installed without any IT or security oversight. This is end users directly installing applications, either through the App Store or connecting via OAuth, and you have these apps in your production environment with a part of your user's credentials, and the IT team doesn't even know what these applications are, and the security team has no visibility. This is not the exception. This is the rule. We see it all the time. So what are these applications? Well, they're all different. We ran what are the top 10 applications from five of the major app stores. And here's what you find. What you find is the top 10 apps for Salesforce, completely different than the top 10 apps for M365, ServiceNow, Workday, GitHub, and others. So it's not just one application. It's multiple applications, and you'll have a, a top 10 list within a given app store, but they're all having different purposes, adding value on top of these core platforms, like a Salesforce or a GitHub or a Workday. So let's talk about how authentication for these applications works. I'm going to go through this quickly, but what we need to understand is the basics of SaaS web authentication. There's three main ways that you can authenticate. Direct username and password, an IDP-initiated single sign-on flow, or a service provider-initiated single sign-on flow. And I'm going to walk through each of those. The first one, standard username and password. I type in my username and password. I click Submit. If it's valid, I get a session ID. This is the way web applications work. But let's say I'm using an identity provider. I've got Ping Identity or ADFS or Okta. I've got something in place doing strong authentication. I could have multi-factor authentication, and zero trust authentication through my identity provider. But once the user connects to that IDP, the IDP is going to pass a SAML assertion and log that user into the SaaS application. And the result is a session ID back to the user's browser. The third type, which is service provider initiated flow. This is where you can configure your SaaS platform to refuse local authentication. If any user tries to authenticate directly, it's gonna redirect them to the IDP and say, if you wanna to talk to me, first you gotta to talk to this identity provider and do strong authentication. This is a best practice, but the end result of the user going through this is a session ID. So you always get the session ID, no matter how many hoops you have to jump through for that initial user authentication, once you have gone through that hurdle, once you're authenticated, your browser is just using a session token. And until you log out or reboot or close your browser, that's all you need for the remainder of the day. So now that I've been authenticated, whether it was simple authentication or very strong zero trust authentication, once I'm authenticated, I'm in the SaaS cloud. And let's say that I'm having challenges with, uh, with my writing. So I'm going to take a very popular grammar plugin, and I'm going to install it into my office productivity SaaS environment. It's going to help me write better emails. It's going to help me with my uh, documents and the things that I'm writing for work. And I can do that for free, actually, through the App Store. So I'm going to go install this grammar app into my office productivity SaaS platform, and it's going to ask me, hey, Brendan, this app is trying to connect to your office environment. It's asking for read update contacts. It's asking to sync your data. It's asking to read your emails. And I'm going to click yes. Now, it's important to look at when we install these applications and they give us their bill, here's all the privileges that we need and the security access that we need. It's not multiple choice. It's a yes, no. So you can't start pairing those away. You either say yes and the application installs, or you say no and the app doesn't install. So as a user, I don't have much of a choice, but I really want this grammar app. So I'm going to click install. Now that I'm authenticated and I said, yes, I accept this, please install it, an OAuth token is going to be created. 
And my Office Productivity SaaS application is going to give one of Brendan's OAuth tokens to the Grammar app. This allows it to maintain API-based cloud-to-cloud communication without me ever having to log in. So the next day when I come into the office and I do my single sign-on strong authentication again, I don't have to go re-authenticate that Grammar app. It just keeps running in the background because I've already granted it access once. This is not a bug, this is a feature. This is the way applications are meant to talk to each other. Think about the apps that we have on our phone to, to get email. We don't have to sign into those every day. You have to strongly authenticate it once. And in the background, whether you're at home, whether you're at work, whether you're at the airport, it's syncing your email in the background. These application tokens are valuable and they make it easy for these apps to work, but they also can cause a backdoor to be created. We have seen in breaches like Kaseya, we have seen in breaches like SolarWinds, that third-party apps can be the weak link. As an attacker, if I can break into one of these third-party apps, even something like a, a free grammar app online, that may not be my ultimate goal. I want to get into that application because it has OAuth tokens into the mailboxes and third-party apps and document repositories of all of these various customers. When we think about a classic attacker's kill chain, what they want to do is land, they want to increase their privileges, and they want to move laterally. That's how we tend to see attacks work in the enterprise. This is a new twist on that. You can't really escalate your privileges if you attack one of these third-party apps. The bill of privileges has been set at install time, but you can move laterally instantly. If you can take over one of these applications, it's already got valid authorized API access into a multiplicity of different customers' production SaaS environments. And attackers know this. So when we look at third-party application breaches, there's certain things that I see people get correct. They look at their identity provider. I'm seeing more and more zero trust and strong authentication. And I'm seeing SecOps monitoring for things like credential spraying or you know, suspicious activity at the identity provider. But what tends to go wrong is there's an incorrect assumption that apps need to behave like users. They need to log in like users and that everything must go through your identity provider. That's typically not the case. And oftentimes teams don't have any visibility into what's going on in the SaaS application. How many OAuth tokens has it handed out? Are those tokens being abused? How often are they being refreshed? How often are they expiring? Are we even using them anymore? There's no visibility and you're not gonna get that from your IDP. You have to look at the SaaS application and see what third party apps are in there and what they're actually doing. You need an inventory and you need monitoring of what those apps and APIs are doing in production. 